Hello everybody, it's Kenneth from the Archives here with another video looking at something from our collections. And today I'm going to be talking to you about one of the University of Dundee's most enduring student publications, ANASAC. Now in the last video we talked about another University of Dundee student publication, the charities magazine, The Glad Mag. And of course, the university has a long history of student publications, going right back to University College in the 1880s when the College magazine was launched. And there were various successors to that over the years, and no doubt we can talk about them in a future video. But the magazine I'm going to talk about today, I say magazine, some would say it was a newspaper and it sometimes flitted between the two formats, is this one, Anasac. Now, Anasac was the first student publication published by the University of Dundee when it came into being in 1967. It was a completely new launch. They wanted to go for something new to symbolise the launch of the new university. Anasac sounds a bit odd. It's a Gallic word and it means strange or unusual. And perhaps that was what they wanted to get across. We don't really know why that was chosen as the name, but it was an enduring name and lasted until the publication folded in the mid 1990s. Today we're going to be looking at the early years. So here's an early issue of Anasac. This is actually the fourth issue, but it was a momentous issue because this was the one published just after the university had had its formal inauguration ceremony and the Queen Mother had been installed as the first Chancellor of the university. And you get an idea that in this early format, it was really a newspaper. It was providing news on events that were happening on the university, things that were happening to students, what was going on in residences. You also get sport reports, you get reports to societies. So it's a real valuable insight into student life. Now, one of the figures who was key in the early days of Anasac was George Robertson. Now, George Robertson, now Lord Robertson of Port Elm, is best known for his long political career. He served as Secretary of State for Defence in Tony Blair's government and then was Secretary General of NATO. So he had a long and distinguished career, but he had a very distinguished career at Dundee as well. He was a student at the time of separation from St Andrews in 1967 and was very proud of Dundee gaining university status. And he got his own column in Anasac called Shakeout. And he used that column to champion the new university. Now, one of the things he was passionate about was what degree students would take, because in the early days, students who started when it was the University of St Andrews could opt to either take a degree from the new University of Dundee or could take a St Andrews degree. And there was debate about what students should do. But George Robertson felt very passionately that they should take Dundee degrees, uh, and he really strongly campaigned for that to happen through his column. He was also very involved in student politics, and in the photograph on the right here, we see him participating in a 24-hour work in, in the library, which he had organised to protest about government policies to do with student grants. At the time, it was rumoured that the student grants were going to be cut by the Wilson government. He wasn't actually the only person involved in Anasac at this time that would go on to have a high profile. Indeed, his ministerial colleague, Brian Wilson, was also heavily involved in Anasac. Anasac was very much a campaigning newspaper in its early days. Uh, and one of the things that it was concerned about, and indeed many Dundee students at the time were actively concerned about, was protesting against apartheid regime in South Africa. And a big issue came in 1968, when a team from the Orange Free State was going to be playing a match, a rugby match, in St Andrews against a University of St Andrews team that was thought likely, and indeed in the end did, include several players from Dundee. Now, George Robertson and a number of other students were very concerned about this and did not want this to happen. At the same time, the rector of the University of St Andrews, Sir Leary Constantine, the noted West Indian cricketer, was also very concerned about this, and Anasac flagged up the fact that he was shocked by this happening. Indeed, there was speculation he might resign as rector of St Andrews over this match if it went ahead, uh, although ultimately that didn't happen. As Anasac reveals, when the match did go ahead, a number of Dundee students went through to St Andrews to protest at the match and several times disrupted the match. They were horrified that an apartheid team was getting a welcome 
in Scotland. And there are other reports in Anasak at this time of Dundee students being involved in demonstrations. Indeed, there's a report not long after this of Dundee students being involved in a demonstration in Aberdeen uh, and being fined and John Lennon agreeing to pay their fine. Anasak was also covering events at what was a very political time in the university's history, probably the most important time in student politics in the history of the University of Dundee. There were a number of student concerns about government policy. This could be things like how education was being funded, how student grants were being funded, but it could also be wider things. So, for example, in late 1970, as we see here, there was student strike action called to protest against government trade union legislation. There were other occupations of the tower, and these are covered in a sack. But the, undoubtedly the key political event of this time was the rent strike of 1973, which Anasak covered in detail. Now, the rent strike was basically a protest against reductions to student grant levels. It was very divisive. There were a number of students strongly supported the action. There were a number who were opposed to it. It divided the Students' Association. It also divided people within the university. Some people praised the way that the rector, Peter Ustinov, tried to negotiate with students. Others who were supportive of the rent strike were very critical of Ustinov and were also critical of Principal James Drever. Um, eventually, you, the strike fizzled out and the strikers did not really achieve their aims. Anasak's coverage is interesting because Anasak was unashamedly pro-strike, but you do get the impression from some of the letters that were being written to it that this didn't necessarily reflect the views of everyone. Anasak also gives us insight into contests for student elections going on. Uh, and here in 1972, we've got the election for JUSA of the University Student Association president for the following session. Uh, and the candidate who won is actually Eric F. Sanderson, who we can see here. And again, he's somebody that would go on to play an important part in the university's history later on, because after a successful business career, he would eventually come back to the university as chair of the university court. Uh, Eric Sanderson wrote for Anasak. His column was called Cat's Eyes. Uh, and that was said to be because his opinions were so middle of the road. Now, Eric Sanderson was actually president at the time of the aforementioned student rent strike, and he got an awful lot of stick from Anasak, but he bore it with good grace, you would have to say. There are other interesting things about Anasak as well. We can see adverts, for example. So we can see what was being advertised as being in the Dundee cinemas, 1960s and early 70s, Dundee still had a few cinemas. We can also see what's going on at the theatres. We can see what bookshops are available. And we also get information about record shops. So Anasak got off to a good start. Now, in a later video, we might talk about some of the later things that happened in Anasak. As I say, it did struggle on through to the 1990s, when eventually a rival publication called McDougall affected its circulation to the point it had to be shut down and re-established as the Student Times. But that's another story. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you're all safe and well, and we'll see you again soon.